Welcome home. I'm Dr. Tama, a minister, licensed psychologist, and sacred artist. And this is Homecoming, a podcast to facilitate your journey home to yourself. While I will provide weekly inspiration and mental health tips, this podcast is not a substitute for therapy. I'm so excited you're on the journey. If you want to request specific topics or share your progress, email me at homecomingpodcast at gmail.com. Also, after you listen, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Let's begin. Welcome, co-journers, to another episode of the Homecoming Podcast. I am so glad that you all are here on today. It is my delight to spend this time with you. I am so appreciative that we have a sponsor for this week's episode, Erica Hill. Thank you so much for supporting the Homecoming Podcast. We are so grateful for your support. And I appreciate the poems that you have been sending in about your homecoming journey. If you have not sent your poem yet, you can send it to homecomingpodcast at gmail.com. And we have a powerful poem on today from Kamari Richardson. Kamari Richardson sent in her piece, and I am excited to share it with you. I am the daughter of a king, even on the days I don't feel like it. My position doesn't change. I have the tools, the resources, the people, the love, and the know-how to come out of anything. I am more than a conqueror. Nothing owns me. Nothing owns me. I can do all things. I have the power and everything I need to take me out of every situation that doesn't align with peace, mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. I am loyal to myself before anyone and anything else. I choose me daily. I have the power to create a better life and future. I am here, and I am growing out and forward. Thank you so much, Kamari. We really enjoyed your piece and that affirmation for all of us, that important reminder of who we are because we go through certain circumstances and situations And it can give us amnesia of sorts. It can cause us to forget our possibility, our identity, our worth, and our value. And so what Kamari reminds us is it's a daily choice that each moment in the day with each decision, I can choose the path that takes me closer to authenticity, that brings me closer to home within myself or I can continue on the detours. And so I'm so glad that you all are joining us on today as we together are choosing. We are choosing ourselves. We are choosing wellness. We are choosing truth and authenticity in a really bodacious way. And really, uh, that is a beautiful, beautiful moment that after all of the experiences that uh, were demeaning or disruptive, that were dishonoring and disrespectful, it would make sense for us to continue to hide and disconnect. But what a radical act to choose ourselves. What a radical act to say, I want to love me. I want to know me. I want to honor myself at my core. And now before we get into our topic fully, I want to acknowledge two communities that uh, are listening with us and I have received your letters and messages and want to be sure to acknowledge your presence here because I am so grateful that you're a part of the homecoming community. And so the first group that I want to shout out and acknowledge are those who are neurodiverse. And so persons who are living with conditions such as autism, dyslexia, 
ADHD. I am so glad that you are with us and I've received your messages and am just really grateful that we can be on this journey together. And I also want to give a shout out and an acknowledgement to those who are on the homecoming journey, who are gender non-conforming, who are non-binary. I am grateful that you're here and I have received your letters and messages as well. So thank you for being here on the homecoming journey. And so for all of you in uh, every country, every identity uh, that is represented here on the homecoming journey, we have a beautiful community that we're building uh, through uh, this technology. And so we are not by ourselves. And I want you to know, I see you, I honor you. I appreciate that you're here on the journey. All right. So our topic on today is actually being an original, being an original. And this is so important in terms of coming home to myself because I have to release all of the scripts that I have been given, all of the shoulds and the costumes, all of the boxes and the labels for me to truly be free to be myself. And from early on, we received these messages about how we are supposed to think, how we are supposed to act, how we are even supposed to dress, how we are supposed to feel. And all of these uh, rigid scripts can keep us from really tapping in to truth, to really honoring not what people say you're supposed to feel, but what do you feel? Not what everybody else thinks, but what do you think? And so this episode is a shout out to the misfits. <laughs> this episode is a shout out to the artists. This episode is a shout out to the trailblazers. This is uh, a shout out to those who have been called too much, uh, who have been misunderstood, uh, who defy categories and labels, uh, who are, in my day, we would say transformers more than meets the eye. So those who are underestimated, uh, those who are quirky, are weird, are different, uh, who follow the beat of your own drum, uh, who make it up as you go along, who do life like a slamming improv, uh, to really follow spirit, right? And to live from a place of uh, freedom and clarity about who you are. And so I honor each of us who really walk uh, a unique path and um, who dare to color outside of the lines. And it is challenging to really embrace your uniquity. It is challenging to really embrace the ways in which you don't fit in. And yet there is freedom there and there is a real clarity that comes and for those of us who really uh, show up in a unconventional way, I am clear that very likely that did not just begin, that often those of us who are outside of the box as adults were often outside of the box as children. And so it has been quite a journey getting comfortable with who we are, coming home to who we are, celebrating who we are without apology, without diluting it, without feeling uh, that we have to conform. And so I am grateful for the nonconformists on this journey uh, because there is a joy there while it can be difficult and challenging and uh, cause, uh, be the root of people's rejection of you, there is also something really beautiful that in the face of all of these pressures, 
for you to continue to be yourself. And I know some of you who are listening will say, I don't really feel like I have a choice, right? Some of us have lived as a false self for some time and tried to fit in. And then there are those who uh, it just never was in you, right? To be in the box or the categories or the labels um, or follow the scripts. And so whether you are newly uh, out of the box or you have lived life uh, beyond the borders or at the borders um, of possibility, then I am grateful for you. And I even know there are those who are listening who are currently uh, in the limitation, in the box, and just wondering what would it be like to step outside of the lines? What would it be like to finally start speaking truth? What would it be like to show up as myself? And so whether you have fully embraced uh, your uh, unique identity your whole life, whether you have discovered it in adulthood, or whether you are just imagining what it might be, I am grateful that you are here as we give this our consideration. So why do we usually uh, conform? It is what we are taught, right? That we are socialized and not only from family, but in school systems, um, in religious teaching, uh, through the media. We receive all of these messages that tell us how we are supposed to be. And uh, often those messages can conflict with who we are. And so then you may have grown up with the idea that how I am uh, authentically is unacceptable, that the way I am uh, is problematic, right? Um, is uh, pathological, is a, I, I am a problem, right? That when we don't fit in, other people can consider us a problem. Uh, we can make people uncomfortable. They don't understand why you do what you do, why you feel what you feel, why you speak the way you speak, um, or why you don't speak. So uh, there, the, these uh, messages are taught and then they are reinforced. So when we follow uh, the rules and people's expectations, uh, we can get rewarded, right? That you are the good child or you are the good student or um, you are the, the good whatever it is you're striving to be when you are uh, staying confined to the path, to the map that others have drawn for you. And when you start to do things uh, in a way that is unconventional, then a lot of times people don't know what to do with that. And so they can punish you for it, right? They can label you, they can stigmatize you, uh, they can reject you. And so uh, my heart is uh, really going today for those who have been rejected and misunderstood uh, because you did not fit in. And I want you to know there you're in good company. You're in good company. There are many of us who did not fit the mold. Um, there are many of us who faced uh, rejection and bullying and isolation. And I want you to know that you are beautifully and wonderfully made. I want you to know that your freedom to be who you are uh, is a gift to the world, that we have so many duplicates, we have so many clones, we have uh, so many mini-me's, right, or copycats, uh, imitators, that it is refreshing to come across an original it is refreshing to be in the presence of a person who chooses freedom over approval. Hmm. 
it is really uh, inspiring and motivating to see uh, transparency, truth in action, to see people living out their truth. What, what a gift. And so even with the pain of the cost and the challenges that go along with it, I want to encourage each of us to really embrace our unique selves. That if I was not so worried about what other people thought, if it was less of a concern to me, other people's approval, then what is the path that I might take? And what is the self? myself that I would unleash, that I would allow to be free, to be expressed uh, in whatever way feels like it honors my heartbeat. And so that uh, is the call for us on today to think about uh, who have I been imitating? What have I been imitating? And what are the false selves that I have been presenting to the world? What are the ways in which I have muted myself, disguised myself? What are the ways in which I perform in order to gain the recognition or approval or acceptance of others? And if I can just begin from the place of my imagination, in psychology, we recognize uh, an important breakthrough can come with imagery or visualization. Can I see me being free? Can I see myself living freely? And when I think about that, what is the visualization? What is the image that comes to mind? That if you let go of the costume, the performance, the script, the imitation, and showed up as you, who is that? How would that look different than how you show up now? How would you speak differently? love differently, feel differently, express differently. And so I want you to really get that visual in your mind. And for some, that may bring up grief because it may be so far from the person that you have currently been manifesting, right? And it may also be painful because some of you may feel you don't really have a choice, that the costs would be so great if you stood in truth in your uh, original, authentic self. And I want you, I invite you to consider what are the ways that I can get more free? What are the ways that I can get closer to the truth of who I am? What are the ways that I can be more authentic? Where are the spaces? And how can I create spaces where I don't have to try to fit in, where I can let that go? And we know that there are certain environments that really pressure us and push for us to conform. And then there are environments where the culture of the place cultivates freedom, encourages a liberation of sorts. And so wanting to find or create the spaces, the relationships, the platforms, the outlets for me to be free, right, to be my authentic self. And... Uh, some people will not get it. Some people will not understand it. But here it is. I'm not doing it for them. I'm not doing it for their 
understanding I, I'm doing it because it is me. And when I do, when I live, when I am resonating from a place of truth, then a lot of the burdens and the stress that I have been carrying, trying to fit into that box can be alleviated. Not every worry, not every stress, but the stress that comes from trying to conform and fit in and be chosen. You know, what have you done with the aim of trying to be chosen, selected, loved, honored, respected, celebrated? What are the parts of you that you left behind in pursuit of somebody else's attention? And so on today, as we think about coming home to our unique selves, we embrace what it means to not fit in. We embrace not just the, the pain of that, but the beauty in that of if I don't fit in to a place that doesn't feel like home anyway, well, now there's liberation in that. And where I want to fit in is in my own being, right? I want to fit in with myself because if I am conforming to other people's expectations while feeling like I dishonor myself, then where is the goodness in that? Where, uh, where, what is the real value in that? And so as our poet said on today, I want to choose me. I want to choose the real me. I want to choose the unique me, the authentic me, the out of the box me. <laughs> that's that's who I want to come home, right? Not uh, other people's creation of who I am supposed to be. And many of us have spent so many years trying to follow other people's script for our lives. And so when we get to the place where I am uh, exhausted and done with conforming to their expectations uh, for me and for my life, but I am ready to live out loud. I am ready for the abundance of life, for the fullness of life. I am ready to experience fulfillment and I can never be fulfilled in my essence at the soul level. I cannot be fulfilled if I am imitating you, right? If I am merely an imitation or an echo of someone else or everyone else, then I will miss me in that echo chamber. I will miss myself. And so because we started this homecoming journey, we acknowledge that there are parts of ourselves that we miss that we want to come home to. And so that means uh, experimenting with and exploring being a misfit, <laughs> experimenting with and exploring being unique, being an original, being truthful, being honest with myself and with others, even when it is unexpected, even when, especially when it is unexpected, to really give myself that permission and compassion uh, to show up uh, without needing to be someone else. And I wonder on today, uh, who did you imitate and what did that imitation cost you? And what will it look like to really walk a different path, right? To create your own path. And uh, for many of us, we have an idea of what that would look like, but we have been often so focused on the cost but I want to ask you to consider what have been the costs of conformity 
what have been the cost of your silence? What has been the cost of living in that box? And uh, I want to say, come out, come out wherever you are. <laughs> come out of other people's uh, expectations and shoulds and scripts to step into the light of who you are to step into the fullness and the freedom of your own expression. Because in that place, that is where authenticity dwells. And whatever I build that comes from the foundation of truth has uh, the capacity to sustain itself. But when I build a life based on lies, then it's a very shaky ground, very rocky ground, and it makes it hard for me to flourish. And you are here uh, to flourish, right? To thrive, to do more than survive, but to thrive. And Dr. Maya Angelou had the quote, surviving is necessary, but thriving is elegant. Surviving is necessary, but thriving is elegant. So I am glad that you survived all of the things that you survived. And for some of us, in order to survive those spaces, we had to conform. To survive those spaces, you had to uh, stick to the script. To survive those spaces, you had to uh, imitate other people. And I want to raise for you the possibility that surviving is different from living, that surviving is different from thriving. So if I want to flourish, to thrive, to actually be alive, then I begin to entertain the possibility of my own unique expression. That I want to create a life where I can actually be alive. I want to create a life where I'm actually awakened, where my consciousness is raised, where I am fully present, where I experience freedom. That, that is homecoming. And that is what I hope each of us will get to experience in some way as we choose ourselves. So I invite your soul to tell your heart, mind, body, and spirit, welcome home.